what is up guys? It's Ivan from BrainBiz.com and today's tutorial is going to be about uh, an idea that came up uh, actually one of my friends uh, called uh, Cam came up with it and you can see a picture of us on the screen right now <laughs> so he came up with this idea because um, during the holiday seasons we get people over and we play games and one of the games that he likes to play is darts and Sometimes as the night progresses, it gets harder and harder to make the calculations to actually keep score. Uh, so I said, yeah, that'd be cool. So we'll make a little box with a, uh, with a Nuno and actually a Nano that we're using for this one uh, to actually keep track of score. So let me show you the box. So here's the box. And the hardest part of this, uh, for me at least, was making the actual box. Uh, we have a little laser cutter, so we did kind of like a finger jointed uh, box. Uh, the hardest part is actually making the holes at the right place to fit all these modules. So we have two four digit modules, we have a 16 by 2 LCD, and we have a rotary encoder, and we got some LEDs underneath here. Um, so what we're going to do today, I'm going to open the box, I'm going to show you uh, what components and how everything is wired up. And then we're going to close it up again and I'm going to show you the functions of how everything works. And the second part of the tutorial, I'm going to, we're going to look at the code for the rotary encoder, uh, the digits, and the LCD. And in the last part, we're going to look at the whole code. Um, we're doing it in multi-part because it's kind of like a long uh, piece of code. So if I do it all in one video, it's going to be a little long and might get a little boring. So we're going to do it that way for, uh, for now. So, let's go ahead, let's open the box, and let's see what's inside, and then we'll come back, and we'll uh, see how this, um, this can help you keep score uh, when you're playing darts. So, let's open this up. Alright, so I removed some parts already, so the knob has been removed, the uh, little sticker that wasn't uh, glued on, so that's removed, and I uh, uh, pushed the keypad in this little uh, slot that we have in the box right here. So now I'm going to open the box and we're going to see the mess that's inside. And there we are. So we're going to go quickly through all the parts that I use for this. Uh, so we have two 4-bit uh, 7-segment seg uh, segment LED. And these use only two pins. So we got two, two, so we're using four pins to actually light up these guys. And then the LCD is a 16 by 2 LCD. But underneath, you don't see it here, but I'm using an LCD I2C backpack. So that enables me to drive this LCD using only two pins. Uh, because the Nano has only, I think, 13 pins available. And if we were to connect the LCD directly to the Nano, we would run out of pins uh, fairly fast. Um, the only drawback to using the I2C uh, backpack is that the display is going to be a little bit slower to update. Uh, but for this function that we're using it for, it's not, uh, it's not terribly uh, bad for us. So there we go. We got one, two of these. We got one LCD. And then I used a little PC board that I cut in half to actually solder the LEDs that represent the player one and player two. And there's a little resistor on the five volts to actually limit the current of an LED. So we got ground and uh, voltage for each one of these. So each, basically each LED is using one pin on the Nano. And then I have the rotor encoder here that is using four, uh, three pins. So we've got the clock, uh, we've got the DT, and we've got the switch that we're using to actually select the score and reset the game that you're going to see after, right after this. Uh, then the Nano is on a medium breadboard, and all the connections are going on the breadboard. Uh, of course, you know, if you drop the box, some of these connections might be disconnected. Uh, so basically I see this as a prototype and then uh, when you confirm that everything is working then you could solder everything so everything uh, stays put. Uh, now the keypad is a 3x4 so 18, uh, 12 button keypad and I didn't do the trick of the resistor to actually use a keypad with only one pin and there's two reasons. First reason is I was lazy, I didn't want to do the resistor divider and all that and second reason is that I had just enough pins to actually connect each one of the um, of the pins of the keypad. 
Uh, so basically, believe it or not, I have no more pins available on my Nano. I'm using them all for uh, this project. But if you were to run out, you can always do the resistor divider, and you can see uh, the video where the tutorial video where we did that. And everything is powered by the uh, USB, uh, which is good because the Nano can be programmed and powered by the USB. So let me put this down. So when we want to play the game, we could just use a battery backpack like this one and connect the USB and that will power the whole thing. And if I want to do, if I want to reprogram or modify the code, uh, change the text on the LCD or change the logic inside, then I just have to plug that into my computer. So there you go. So that's the inside. So now we're going to close it back up. I'm going to close it back up. We're going to cut here and then I'm going to show you when everything is put back, uh, back inside, uh, how it works. So let's go check that out. All right, so welcome back. So I closed the box uh, up and now we're ready to test it. So we saw what's inside. So now I'm going to use a regular USB battery pack and power up the, uh, the box. What I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in on the uh, LCD because it has problem focusing for the LCD. So here we go. We're going to see the startup screen. So let me plug that in. There we go. So there you go, it's starting up, it's flashing the Dart scoreboard version 1.0. It's going to do it five times, but you could adjust that in the code. And here it's asking for starting score. Uh, so basically at Darts you go, well, at the games we play, I mean we're not professionals or anything, so we just start from a, a number and then we try to go down to zero. So you're not going to see it now, I'm just going to rotate the actual uh, rotary encoder. And as you can see the starting score starts to go up or down, like so. So now I'm going to zoom back out so you guys can see the actual unit. So at the same time I'm scrolling here, it's putting the information there and also putting the starting score on each one of the players. And also both LEDs are on. So let's say we start at, I don't know, uh, 7, 8, well 901. So when I press then it sets the score at 901, this LED goes off because that's part two, and this one goes on. So now this doesn't do anything anymore. So now I'm going to zoom in again on the LCD so you can see it. So what it says, it says player one, 901 minus, so I'm going to enter 11. Whoops, you won't, you're not going to see it like this. There you go. And I got 11, and I'm going to press enter. And zoom back out again. And as you can see, the score was updated, the LED went out, and now we're at player 2. So now if I enter 11 here, 11, and enter, which is this one, it switches back again. Now, if I, 890, let's say I enter 999, which is too much. So if I press enter, it's not going to do anything. It's going to say, well, you went over, so it's just going to switch player. And also if I enter 0 and enter, then I can switch between one or the other. Now one other thing, this key here acts as a delete key. So I'm going to zoom in on the LCD again. So let's say I enter 4, 5, and 6, and I didn't want 6, so I can go back by pressing the X key, like so. So 4, 5, 8, go back. And the last thing that this thing actually does is if I press again on the rotary encoder, so I'm going to press, and you're going to see on the LCD screen, it's going to ask me, reset game. If I go left, no. If I go right, yes. So I can select if I want to reset the game once the game is over. So let me go back down. And when I press the actual rotary encoder, it resets the game to have it start over again. And there you go. So now I'm ready to start another game. So there you go, guys. That's what this box actually does. So it keeps score for both uh, two players. It uh, gives you some information on the LCD screen. And you can uh, use the keypad to enter or delete. And also set the score with this thing here. So let's go back to the main camera and wrap it up. So there you go guys, this is going to be the end of this video today. So we looked at the, um, the component that's in the box. 
uh, we actually saw the functionality um, that we put into it. And in the next video, that's going to be a, right after Christmas, we're going to start looking at the code that makes it all work. Uh, the first part is going to be the rotary encoder, the digits, uh, the LCD, and the uh, last part, which is going to be right after uh, New Year's, uh, it's going to be the rest of the code, and we'll wrap it up that way. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If uh, you enjoy our video, please uh, subscribe to our channel, and you'll get notified when we post new ones. And since the holidays are um, right around the corner, I'd like to wish everyone uh, happy holidays. Uh, the best uh, for uh, your family, your friends, and hopefully you have a great time. So until next time, guys, uh, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.